eggs can finally be called healthy. After years and years of fear-mongering about cholesterol, we made it! If you're confused why we couldn't for so long, we owe that to the original definition of healthy that we made back in the 90s. A definition that is so egregiously bad, it allowed us to think avocados were going to kill us because of the high fat and kind bars were somehow healthy, despite the fact that they have got more in common with a Snickers bar than an actual whole food. But as much as we may hate this failure of the FDA in the past, the beauty of science is that when it is done right, we gain information, we adapt accordingly. It seems crazy now to say that a whole food fatty cut of salmon couldn't possibly be healthy, but cereal could. Now it seems crazy. But back then we were basically praising whole grains and fiber and had this obsession with vitamin A and C and all these other nutrients, which, which yes, they are important, but those, those little synthetic Flintstone vitamins that we were slamming before school were unfortunately not doing that much to offset the damage of that Captain Crunch and low-fat milk that these school toilets had the unfortunate job of fighting with every morning. So let's answer this. What was considered healthy in 1994, almost 30 years ago, when they first made this definition, and what has it actually changed to? In 1994, for a product to be labeled healthy, it had to contain three grams or less of total fat, one gram or less of saturated fat, a maximum cholesterol of 60 milligrams, and 480 milligrams or less of sodium. It needed to have vitamins A, C, calcium, iron, protein, and some dietary fiber in there. There was no exact amount for those. And these were all measured per serving. We now know the importance of fat and cholesterol for hormone production. We know sodium is not the boogeyman, provided you're on a whole food diet, and that it can actually be helpful with hydration, muscle contractions, nerve function, and of course, this is how we ended up with all these fortified cereals and synthetic vitamins that are stripped of their enzymes, their phytonutrients, and just purely don't absorb, was because for some reason, we saw these things as so important while ignoring all this other stuff. Now, however, for food to be labeled healthy, it needs to contain... Ready? Food. What? I'm not even kidding. Like, that's, that's a part of this, you guys. That is a part of the instructions that they have, is that it needs to contain food from one of these areas. Fruits, veggies, grain, dairy, or protein. I have no idea what that means for the time before this. You know, I, th I thought we got rid of the chalk and the milk in the beginning of the FDA, but apparently we still weren't required to have food be a part of food. Raw fruits and veggies are automatically getting that healthy label, which is great. There is a 5% daily value limit for saturated fat, but a 10% limit if it comes from animal products, which I fucking love that they did that, by the way. Something that is very strange is that spices won't be allowed to have that healthy label because of the drying process. You know, it's, it's processed food now. I think that's insane. Spices aren't just flavor. They have tons of major nutrient properties, but you know, Hey, I'm going to level with you guys. It's, it's not perfect. It's even contradictory at times, honestly. But it is better. A lot better. It actually feels like, for once, they have our interest in mind. Like dad finally came home after 30 years of getting milk and cigarettes from the corner store, you know? And, and that, is not, that is not just a joke about me being 30 and not knowing my dad. Hey guys, thanks for watching that episode. If you got some value out of that, please give me a little subscribe somewhere in there, whether that is on Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening right now. And uh, you can also find me on TikTok, Instagram, pretty much everywhere, honestly, at Andrew PFM. So uh, yeah, guys, until next time, we'll see y'all later.